All right, this is the Golden Age of Stratomatic uh, final installment. Um, we're going to do this for an expansion team to show how it's a lot more difficult to put a team together from scratch who never existed before, who's comprised from a lot of fringe players and from players all over the major leagues. Um, and you have to, you've got to build a franchise from, from the startup. And the franchise I chose, and I have their uh, card stack here, um, is the uh, Arizona Diamondbacks. Um, this is the uh, one of the six uh, teams um, expansion teams that I had. As you re may recall from one of the earlier videos, how do you add six? Major League Baseball had 26 teams from this period, so how do you add? Um, how do you add then? Um, six more teams. Well, you protect the uh, the two worst teams and, and you don't take any of their players. They get a, basically a buy in the draft. And then you just seed teams 3 through 26 uh, in, a, in a single snake draft where the, the 26th team is your World Series champion. So from here you've got 24 baseball teams. These 24 teams are going to protect their four best players. The fifth best player would then be put into a player pool, and there would be 24 of them. And these 24 players would be taken by teams 27 through 32. Uh, each team would take a player. Four per team times six is 24. And that's how the core of the expansion teams were put together. To give you some idea, in the 1976 draft, what the core players were for Arizona, their first player was Ron Say, and they took him out of the Dodgers organization. They took uh, Chris Spire out of the Giants organization to play short, and then they took uh, two pitchers. Uh, Gary Ross uh, pitched on the rotation for the California Angels, and Reggie Cleveland uh, was a starting pitcher, could also pitch out of the bullpen for the Boston Red Sox. These were the first the four core players that they built their 1976 roster around for this expansion team. You see it's a wide range of players who were, you know, Ron Say was a, uh, an all-star, but, you know, guys like Cleveland and Spire were kind of a fringe, fringe players at best uh, for most of their careers. So from that, um, the next step was the 1976, 7, 8, and 9 draft. And from that draft, I have, if I can get a focus going here, uh, here's Arizona's, and these uh, represent um, the uh, the eight players from the 1976 card set that have to be replaced. You start, of course, you've got uh, Gary Ross, who's a starting pitcher, Reggie Cleveland, who was uh, working on the bullpen. They had Bill Buckner, uh, whose contract was up, and they decided if they wanted to keep him or not. They had uh, Steve Braun, uh, Roland Office, you see Chris Spire. And uh, it's kind of dark here, but uh, you have two uh, more uh, infielders, Ken Pape and Luis Melendez. And they represented the, um, the, uh, the rest of the, uh, the rest of uh, Arizona's roster. So from that, we'll, we'll show you how their, their draft went. Um, so building the team, you have uh, Gary Ross. This would focus would focus better. All right, so you had uh, Gary Ross and Reggie Cleveland were the only were the only two pitchers, and then you had uh, the six hitters from the '76 set. You had uh, Buckner, who was a uh, first base outfield, and Braun, who could play the corners. And you had Office in center field, rolling Office. Spire was a shortstop, and then Melendez and Pape. So let's see how Arizona was put together. Whoops. Let's see the rest of the players who were on this organization to see how their how their draft went. Okay. Let's start with the players from uh, 19 the 1977 set. They were uh, Andy Messersmith. Uh, and Master Smith, eh, he didn't do too well. He pitched 100 innings. 
He's uh, can only pitch on the every fifth day. He had been area over four, not that great a pitcher. Uh, you had uh, a couple catchers, uh, Ed Herman and Bob Davis. Again, fringe players. Bob Davis could hit lefties well, and he could throw minus two arm. Ed Herman was a lefty, and he he could hit decently. He hit around uh, 291 in a limited role for the Houston Astros. Um, you had Cesar Geronimo was your center fielder, and um, great glove. He could even hit left-handed pitchers. And your other two guys. You had Mike Vale, who had a fantastic year. Again, as in the fringe role now, um, he hit 333 with a limited number of bats. And I'll explain what we what we do with players who have exceptional years, but you don't want to misuse them or overuse them uh, because of their having statistical anomalies. And there there's no better representation than that than the final player from their 76 card set, which is. Roger Freed, and that is a pretty tremendous uh, hitting offensive card. Uh, Roger Freed, uh, looking at his stats, um, Freed hit in only 83 at bats. He hit 3.98. So the overall playing of the league, if your French players are used excessively, you're, it's just going to distort the overall results of the league. So I have a couple fail-safe rules I use for players like uh, when Roger Freed comes in the league. One rule I use is that in uh, the in league play, a player like this is only allowed three plate appearances of the game and can only play the first seven innings of the game and has to play at his worst position on the field so that he becomes a defensive liability. He cannot play designated hitter. I do this for players who have uh, fringe, what I call fringe years, years where their numbers are exceptional and exceed a, what a typical batting champion would do. I did the same thing for Mike Vale, even though he hit 333, but he only did 180 at bats. So these two players are only available in, in a limited amount of playing time. But it would help a team like Arizona because they're not going to be able to put uh, a, a full roster together of everyday players because uh, of the talent pool that's available. So those are the six guys from 1977. And then uh, from the 1978 set, uh, let's see here, you have um, uh, Bob Welch, young pitcher they took from the Dodgers organization, John DeAquisto, Steve Mingori, and I think that's everyone. Oh, and then in the 1979 card set, we had Ron Say, who, of course, we saw from 1976. His contract was uh, was renewed in the in the last draft. And Bob Shirley, who they took out of the Padre organization, uh, who went uh, pitched over 200 innings. So he goes on the rotation. So the next question is, who, what do, from the 1976 cards, what did... Arizona do with these eight players. You have the rights for four of them. You have to retire two of them, and then you can put two of them on waivers. So what Arizona did was they renewed Bill Buckner because Bill Buckner would become a, batting, a future batting champion. Um, they renewed Reggie Cleveland. They renewed uh, Chris Spire, a good middle infielder, and they renewed um, Steve Braun. The two players that were retired were Luis Melendez, Luis Melendez and Ken Pape. Their final years were in 1976, so they were retired. And then you had uh, two uh, free agents. And what they did was they cut Gary Ross because in 1976, Gary Ross, that was his last good year. He pitched on the rotation, and they put him on wa waivers because in his future years he was very poor. And then Roland Office, who really never really cracked mounted too much offensively, he was placed on waivers. So what did Arizona do with their draft? They, have, uh, they can take eight players. So 
with their first pick, they took Bill Buckner. And the year they took Bill Buckner was the year he won the National League batting title, which was 1980. Buckner hit 324 for the Cubs, and he becomes the first player to, taken by Arizona. And he's taken from the 80 card box. The next player they selected was Reggie Cleveland. Cleveland had moved to the bullpen by this point of his career, and he had a pretty good job. He was a pretty good setup guy. He pitched in the Texas organization, and he had an ERA of 308. So he was moved into the rotate uh, to the bullpen now from the 78 set. So now they have to take a guy from 79 and 77. So the next player they t they selected was a speedster by the name of Miguel Delane. Switch hitter, a double A stealer. He could play all outfield positions with moderate defense. He was a fringe player. He only had 36 at bats, but he hit 300. Sweet little player, uh, who with limited playing time, he is taken as a he represents being a rookie from the 1979 uh, box. We'll put Delaney down here, and he basically takes the role of one of the retired players, or actually he takes the role of you could say a role in office, since he was put on waivers. And then the uh, the fourth pick was a. Steve Stone, and Stone was taken from the 1977 box. He pitched uh, 200 innings going on the rotation. And so since he goes on the rotation, you have 77 Stone, and he'll take the role of Gary Ross, who went on the rotation but has now been placed on waivers. So, uh, and also, because you have 77 Steve Stone, for the next draft, Steve Stone could become a restricted free agent, and his contract can be renewed in the year 1980. Is this is that would that be in his future? Because in 1980 he had 25 wins, and won the American League Cy Young, Cy Young Award. So Arizona could very well have a, a future Cy Young winner on their team. So that's how the first four picks were done. Then out of the 77 box, they added Ted Sizemore. Good little infielder for the 77 uh, Phillies. And Sizemore takes uh, the spot of one of uh, the other infielders. From the 78 box, there's uh, Chris Spire, middle infield. So where's Spire? We just put a 78 there. In the 79 box, we take Steve Braun, who's used mostly as a lefty off the bench as a pinch hitter. Uh, he can play a little bit of third base and left field in a pinch. Put him in a 79 slot. And lastly, in 1980, they took another middle infielder to replace the other guy that was retired. They took Tony Bernazard, a switch hitter who uh, was halfway decent at third base and could you could put in shortstop if needed. Uh, he'll replace uh, Melendez on the roster. And this is Bernazard. So, there you see how their eight players were uh, drafted. So, how does this team look like when you put when you put all the pieces together? How does this team play? Well, let's put together and we get their pitching staff together and see what this looks like when you put all these little parts together for an expansion team. Um, you have at the top of your rotation you've got just two guys who go on the rotation. You've got um, Steve Stone and Bob Shirley. Uh, these two guys can pitch on three days rest. Um, so to complete the rotation, you're going to need two other uh, starters, and they have uh, Bob Welch, who is a starter seven, and they have Andy Messersmith, who's also a starter seven. So you've got uh, two guys on the rotation, two guys, your number three and number four starter, and if you needed a, a swing starter uh, as a fifth starter, you could go with Fred Holdsworth in long relief or your, or your swing starter. And then in your bullpen, You've had uh, you drafted Reggie Cleveland for your long relief. You have a lefty setup guy in Steve Mangori, and you have a righty closer in John DeQuisto. So that's pretty decent staff. 
we saw the Baltimore Orioles earlier. This team is nowhere near as uh, good as the Orioles are uh, with pitching. But, I mean, uh, in a short, a shorter season, a team like this Arizona team can hold its own. And, I'd, and you know, I'd, I'd like to see my expansion teams and my all-star, the perennial playoff teams, play somewhere between, you know, the, the playoff teams, if they, if they play 600 baseball and the, and the last place teams play 400 baseball, then I think my league is a success. And now let me let's look at the um, the offense here. How how do the, these twelve players um, play together? So oh, look at them and at the catcher first and um, DH spots we have uh, your catcher and platoon, and we saw these guys earlier from the seventy seven box, which is Bob Davis and Ed Herman. Uh, your first baseman is Bill Buckner, and at um, at a, a DH you can use um, Steve Braun, who was mostly a pinch hitter in the National League at that time. You can use him. Uh, he's going to need some help though, as a decent. You're going to have to find somebody else to DH against lefties here from another spot, spot of this roster. Let's look into the middle infield, and you've got Sizemore can handle second base. You have uh, Ron Say. He's more. He's very solid at third base. His one of his best years was 1979. Your shortstop's Chris Spire. He's also solid. So your middle infield is pretty good. And then you got Tony Bernazard as your uh, uh, your swing shortstop. And you, what you can use Bernazard now, since you've got a surplus middle infield, you can have Bernazard or one of these other guys take us take a shot at a designated hitter for this team. And now let's go to the outfield. In left field, you have Mike Vale, who is a pretty spectacular hitter, but what? He's a poor fielder. He's a four on the outfield. He can't be used in the designated hitter spot. In center, you've got Cesar Geronimo, who's a fantastic fielder. a so one in center field. He's going to have to cover a lot of ground. And in right field, is that's where you have to play Roger Freed, his worst position. So for seven innings, uh, you have these two guys as liabilities defensively for this team, but they knock the cover off the ball. And then you have Miguel Delaney, who could come in for defense in late innings. You can use him uh, in your outfield spot for Freed, and you can use Braun for the other outfield spot in the late innings once the, once the uh, these guys come out of the game. And that's the Arizona Diamondbacks. That's a pretty good baseball team there. And that's how you start with an expansion team. I hope you've enjoyed these videos. Thank you for watching.